Hello and welcome to this tutorial session. In this tutorial, we will cover loops utilizing a program. Before we look at the program, let's quickly cover what is a loop, which loops we are covering in this tutorial, and what are their syntaxes are. A loop is a control structure that causes a statement or statements to repeat. In this session, we will cover three different loops, which are while loop, for loop, and do while loop. A while loop is a pretest loop that starts with the word while and then the expression or condition within an open and closed parentheses, followed by statements in block statement. We always have to make sure our loop reaches the false status utilizing increment or decrement counter. Otherwise, our loop will become an infinite loop, which is not a fun situation, since an infinite loop will fill up your RAM space, and at one point of time, the system will run out of memory and it will cause system failure. A great use for while loop is usually in input validation. Next is for loop, which is also a pretest loop with this syntax. It starts with four open and close parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we have the initialization, expression, which is the same thing as condition, and our counter control, separated by semicolon, followed by the block statements. For, for loop is mostly used when you roughly know how many times your loop will iterate. They are uh, they're a great tool to use with arrays and file when reading and writing data. And the last loop we will cover is do while loop, which is a post test since the expression will come after we at least run the program once. Here is the syntax. We start by the word do followed by the block statements and after closing the curly braces of our block statement, we will write while open and close parentheses and our expression followed by semicolon. Do while is wildly used in menu driven programs where you want the user to see the menu at least once before making the selections. It is also used when you want to make the user um, and ask them if they want to quit the program or rep repeat the program. Okay, let the fun begin. In this simple program, I have implemented three different loops to see them in action. This simple program asks the user to input a positive number and then our for loop here will count the number backward to zero. At the end of the program, I will be asking the user if they want to input another number and the program will repeat itself should the user choose Y. To repeat this program, I will be utilizing a do while loop and because of that, I will put my whole program into the do clause or do block statement. As you can see right over here, after the, the declaration of my variables, I will ask the user to input a positive number and I will check the user's input using a while loop. Since we're not in control of what user may input, we have to count for all possible inputs. In the case of this program, we only want positive integers, so I will create two while loop, one to check to make sure the user is inputting positive numbers, and one to count for any other input aside from integers. To check for positive numbers, I can simply use a while loop to tell the user that their input is invalid and they need to re-enter it. And here we're accepting the next input from the user. To check for any other input such as character, string, or anything else, I can use the try and catch method for exception handling. To use this method, I need to import the input mismatch exception library. So here we use our while loop to try to get the integer from the user. In the event that the user input was not an integer, the catch clause will be executed and it will tell the user to input an integer and here we're accepting the user's next input. Once the user input the positive number, my for loop will start executing and counting backward to zero. I have initialized my for loop with user's input, so I wrote int i equal num. And as long as counter is greater than or equal to zero, I will be decrementing by one and will print i with the space right next to it. So for example, if the user inputs three, the count statement will print three, and since three is still greater or equal to zero, i minus minus will decrement by one, and now i is two. And now that is 
now to which is the next number when counting backward is printed. Again, since 2 is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus will decrement by 1, and now we print 1. 1 is still less than or equal to 0. One more time, i minus minus, and now we print 0. 0 is still less than or equal to 0, but if we decrement it by 1, it will go to negative, which will make our expression false, and that's how the loop will stop. And at this point, I will ask the user if the user would like to repeat the program or not, and the user will input their choice. Note, I have given user the choice to input n if they don't want to continue repeating this program, but in reality, I'm not, not checking for that. I'm only checking for y, because anything else aside from y will end the program at this point. Um, it is important, however, to always communicate to the user one of the many ways that the program will end. Okay, now let's run the program. So we're going to run the program. And the program is going to ask us to enter a positive number. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just write some gibberish. It's going to say it's invalid, enter an integer. I'm going to put a negative integer in here. It's going to tell me that invalid enter positive integer, and then now I'm going to put a positive integer, and it's going to count backward to zero. The program is asking me if I want to repeat the program, so I'm going to go ahead and put y, and it's going to ask me again to input another integer. Now, instead of y, I'm going to put something else. Let's put f. Uh, this should quit the program. And the program is now quitting, but you see how there is no messages and kind of like user is hanging in there, finding out, trying to find out what's going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back to our program and add two small line over here, which we're going to write an if statement that's, that is going to tell the user that if it was not y, then we're going to give a little message to users saying that we're exiting the program. That way the user is going to actually understand and know what's going on at the end of the program. And this is how we end the program. Now let's run the program again. Let's just run over the program. I'm going to put 3 here. It's counting backward. And now I'm going to put N. And it's telling me exiting the program. This will conclude this session. Let me know if you have any questions or would like a video on another topic by commenting in the comment section down below.